This example, we're going to build on what we learned in class about the core animation techniques. This allows you to move images around the screen, scale the images, or change the frame. Uh, but not only images, you can uh, move labels around, buttons around. Basically, any uh, type of view that's on the iPhone screen, you can move around or scale or rotate uh, using these transitions. But uh, in this demo, I'm going to show you how to do two advanced features. Uh, one is to uh, at the end of an animation, call a function, which you could trigger a new animation sequence. Uh, and then uh, Hendrik had a question about how to uh, use the curve um, uh, function with the animation. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that too. Uh, before you guys start this tutorial, can you read that web page that I posted on the, uh, the website? Because uh, that is kind of based on the demo. And it's, it explains what we're doing uh, fairly clearly. Uh, also, I've posted the source files on the website, so if you want to download them too, then you can see a working version of the example. Okay, uh, let's get started. Open uh, Xcode up. Fire that up and create a new Xcode project. Uh, once again, we're using the view-based application. Uh, and you're going to call it Core Animations because core animation is uh, it's the library that allows us to move stuff around. Okay, so I have a, a pizza image here. Uh, you guys can grab an image off the internet, but um, my pizza image is on the website. You can use that. Uh, you want to drag that into the resources folder. Go ahead and copy the items into destination group. Great. So now our pizza's there. Uh, now we want to hop into our core animations view controller dot h and there it is All right. now for this example we're not going to use interface builder to set up our uh, UI image view um, we're just going to do it through code uh, so we want to make a new UI image view and star we're going to call this image we'll keep it nice and short uh, and we want to make a property, non-atomic, retain. And like I said, we're not going to use the interface builder. So normally you write IB outlet. And the IB stands for interface builder. But we're not going to use interface builder in this example. We're just going to use code to create our image. So you, all you need is, uh, you just need to copy this and paste it down there. Copy, paste. All right, great. So now your .h file is all set up for this example. So go to the .m file. And before I start, I'm going to just delete all these extra comments. Um, delete everything except, uh, except the allocate. So you should be looking at something that looks like this. All right. Now the first thing we want to do is synthesize. We always have to synthesize our variables. The only thing we're synthesizing is image. That allows us to, um, when we do image dot, well, if you did it in here, you can see the properties of image. If you hadn't synthesized it, then I don't think, oh, you can still see them, but, well, you have to synthesize those properties. Um, okay. Now, um, the first thing we want to do is we're going to call up one of the built-in view functions, which is view did load. Now, as we've, we've talked about this function, this gets called every time your, uh, your application, a view gets loaded up. So immediately when the app starts, view did load gets called. Um, and so what do we want to do in this? Well, we need to uh, set our first image. So we'll do image equals. And here we're going to define our UI image. And we need to allocate memory for it. When you do it in Interface Builder, you don't need to do that. But because we're creating it with code, we need to allocate the memory. Uh, so we want to do init with image. So as you see, it kind of pops up there. If it doesn't pop up, you can hit escape as you're typing, and you'll get a list of possible options. But we want a knit with image. And 
then we can't just write the image name, we have to use a UI image. And then that, the UI image asks for the image name. And as long as you've dragged that in there, uh, my image is called pizza.jpg. And as you guys saw that pop up there, we need two, two square brackets for this one because we have this section right here, which is a UI image. And then you're also over here, you're allocating memory. So don't forget the last square bracket at the end. Okay. Whoop. All right, next, so we've got an image on there and that created the image. Now we need to set our image frame. Frame, set frame. Is that the right? Oh, set frame. And set frame requires a CG rectangle or core graphics rectangle is what that stands for. So we'll do CG uh, rect make. And for now, we'll just place it at zero, zero. So it's being placed at zero X, zero Y. And we're gonna give it a width of 100 and a height of 100. And don't forget your semicolon. Oh, and we forgot our square bracket. Remember, put that in there. Okay, now, the last thing we have to do is add it to the view. We've created it and we set a rectangle, but it's not on the view yet. To set it on the view, we have to do self and view. So the, we're writing code in self, but then this, this, um, this view controller is connected to a view. And the view is where we want to add it to. Uh, so we do add sub view and it takes a UI view. So your image is also a view. It's, um, it, everything that you add to the, the stage or the view is, is considered a view in a, in a way. Uh, so add image. And I think that's good. So if you test right now, and why don't you go ahead and do that, build and run, we should see that pizza graphic on our stage in the top left corner. Oh no, it's installing on my iPhone. So I'm gonna switch to simulator. Now, if you're using simulator, like it, it, does, it runs a little faster. So sometime for development, it's quicker just to view it in the simulator. Uh, but you do wanna test on both the simulator and the iPhone, because Occasionally it does uh, do strange things on different platforms. So, okay, there's our pizza. So that worked. So at this point you should have your pizza graphic in there and it should be a rectangle of 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And we placed it at zero, zero. All right, that's all we need to do for view did load. Now, okay. Now, the next function we want to set is one we used earlier in class, and this is a touch function. Uh, it's called touches begins. This represents the, this is an event that happens when you touch an object or touch the uh, UI view. Um, what we're going to do is when you touch, we're going to move the pizza to that new location, or we're going to transition to that location. Uh, so go ahead and uh, we need to capture the touch first. So we have to make a new UI touch. Now that's, that is a touch event. Uh, and we want to call the touch my touch. Uh, but it could be called something else if you want. But we're just placing, we're getting touches and any object, any object that touches the screen, touches is part of this, it gets passed to when you touch, touches gets passed inside of this function. And then we're saying like, I wanna put when I touch into my touch. So now we can use my touch to get the center point of the touch. Um, okay, now here is where we write the animation sequence. Uh, so UI view, uh, begin animations. And it's asking for animation ID. Now in class we didn't talk about this, but 
Basically, every time you do it, run an animation, you can give it a unique ID. And then we can use this unique ID to call functions later. Uh, so let's call, let's give this a unique ID, uh, move to. And don't forget this or it'll, it'll break. If you don't put this little at sign in front of uh, your, your strings, it, it, it breaks. It's an easy mistake to make. And then for contacts, write null. So this is that's the first step for begin animation. The second one is UI view. Um, we want to do set animation, not animation curve, but animation. Oh, set animation uh, delay. No, it's not delay. Uh, we're not using delay, but if you use set animation delay, that would uh, delay the start of the animation for uh, for a second. Duration, there we go. Um, the duration is how long it takes for the animation to complete. It's in seconds, so if you did uh, one, it's going to be one second. If you did 20, it's going to be 20 seconds to, to animate from point A to point B. Uh, likewise, you can do uh, 0.5 for half a second or a quarter of a second. Uh, I want our animation to take one second to do. All right, now, now from this point we can do, uh, we can set the animation properties. Uh, we're gonna be animating image, so let's do image. Uh, we're changing the center point on this. So image center equals and we want to take my touch. We get my touch and the location in view, uh, and the view is the viewer in. So it's self dot view. So what is this doing? It's taking. It's getting my touch and it's calling a function for my touch. The function is location in view, and that is a that returns a a point, a center point that we can use to move the image. And last to finish our um, animation, we need to say UI view and then commit animations. And that's going to run this animation. So let's save it. Do command B to make sure you don't have any errors. Hopefully I don't have any. Uh, succeeded. So build and run. And hopefully this will work. When I'm clicking, ah, there it goes. It's moving around. But hey, what happens if you click twice? Then it it just jumps over there. Um, we don't want that. Uh, but yeah, as you see, it's, it's moving around. Why don't we change the uh, the speed here of the set animation duration to 0.25? So that's a quarter of a second. So uh, let's uh, build and run that. And now it's just flying over there. 